They say the desperate times call for desperate measurements. Uh, we are not here in the flesh, but we can still keep going electronically. We're in the seventh unit. First thing, uh, we're looking at binomial expansion. It's out of 7A in the Harrison Hess text. And I think you have a packet um, that on the back of the first page looks like this. If you don't try this out, uh, I made a beautiful uh, pattern here. And maybe you've seen it before, maybe not. But see if you can extend the pattern, see what's going on. Maybe pause me until then. Uh, go. Okay, so hopefully you, you can see in this that um, we get sort of this piece from these two. So what's happening is you're adding those together to get the four. So I guess this one and three, these two should give you a four over here. This continues the patterns of ones. So I'm guessing all of these are ones and all of these are ones. Um, this four and the six should give you another 10. This should be a five because the four and the one, this one and the four should be a five. And we can keep going from there. This would be a six because of these two. This should be a 15. This would be a 20, uh, 15 and six. And if you're a criterion being in the MYP, you'd, sit, you'd look at the patterns behind these. And there's a lot of interesting things going on. Uh, some are very basic. All of these are ones and all of these are also ones. Very basic. The other is uh, they're all symmetrical. Um, there's the symmetry uh, from right and left. It's symmetrical that way. Uh, here's another one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Kind of interesting. Um, this is, there's some uh, changes in here that are interesting. If you look into it, there's a, there's a lot of interesting patterns in this. And this, this, um, this is called Pascal's Triangle. Probably you've heard of it. Uh, there's a lot of neat things going on. Um, another one that's pretty good is that all of the the sum of these is one, the sum of these is two, four, eight, 16, which is two to the zero, two to the first, two squared, two cubed. Uh, so if you think of this as like the zeroth row and the first row and the second row and the third row, uh, this would all be two to the row number, which is kind of interesting. There's this hockey stick pattern where if you add up these, and then turn the corner, these add up to this one, which is kind of cool. These add up to turn the corner, er, that one. These add up to that one, kind of cool. A uh, lot of interesting things going on in there. Fibonacci's uh, numbers sequences in there as well. Um, and this is kind of the, there's an interesting pattern here that we're gonna tie into in a, in a minute. <clears throat> in the binomial expansion, we're gonna expand your mind uh, and also expand some binomials. This is a binomial. It has two things being added together. Uh, trinomials are like x squared plus 3x plus 5, right? That's a trinomial, 1, 2, 3. This is a binomial, 1, 2. And we expand it because we have an exponent right there. And if you were to expand, if you were to expand like x plus 6 squared, you would multiply two of the x plus 6s together. Uh, so you'd have an x plus 6 multiplied by itself. You do a little binomial multiplication. Sometimes we call it FOIL, and you get x squared, uh, 12x's from the two sets of 6x, and 36, right? That's called expansion, right? When expansion is mega net bigger. Uh, factorization is mega net smaller. Factorizing really is making it into multiples, and this is right now addition, adding chunks. Um, but either way, we want to be able to expand uh, binomials when we don't just have a squared on them. So for instance, this one has a cube right here. Bing. And one way we could do it the old-fashioned way is uh, multiply them together, it, the x plus 2 together three times, boom, boom, boom. Oh, you'd have to like distribute, you'd have to multiply these together first, like ignore this one for a second. You get this or I guess it multiply the second two together, it's fine. And then do the same game with the two and the x, you distribute the two in, boom, boom, boom. And then later do the same thing and distribute the x in and then simplify. Ugh, turn into that. Fine, we can do that. But what happens like if it's not a three? What if it's like a seven, right? This would become awful. And so wouldn't it be nice if we could simplify this process and so we could have more time to play Candy Crush or do something useful with our lives? Uh, and in fact, there is. And that's the theory about binomial expansion. So that's what I want to show you.
So, take a deep breath, stretch it out, and then check it out with me. All right. Uh, who cares to the zero is one, right? So a plus b to the zero is going to be one. Neat. If you call it uh, a plus b to the first, <clears throat> you get a plus b. That's fine. I'm just increasing this by one. If you say, give it, call it squared, it's a plus b times itself. And here I factored it out for you, so you don't need to. But you get a squareds, b squareds, and two sets of a b. That's fine. Keep going with it. A cubed. You trust me on this. You can do it yourself if you don't trust me. Maybe you should. Uh, it turns into this. Ew. Yeah. Uh, a to the a plus b to the fourth turns into that. I promise. Don't try it You're at home. You uh, wear safety glasses if you do. And there's to the fifth. That's nasty, right? But uh, let me clean it up for you a little bit. I'm going to take this whole thing and just shift things around. Ready? Uh, ah, there. Shifted, right? Can I pack it like that? So here's a plus b. That's to the first. That's just one. Here's an a plus b. Here's an a squared and a b squared from this one. Let's make some lines. This is this one. I'm, all, I'm a little off. This one's this one. This one's this one. Um, so with, with this squared, I've got a squareds and b squareds. And here there's a single a and a single b. Right? And I've got three things in there. Uh, here with this third, I start with an a cubed, and, and then I have this and this, and then, then end up with a b cubed. And same thing with the fourth. I start with a to the fourth, end with a b to the fourth, and things kind of change along the way. Um, what's going on in there? Like, there's a pattern here. If you see the pattern, it helps jump to the conclusion of what's going to happen. If you look at all these, like this starts with this first term A to this maximum power of 2. And then here in this next one, ignore this for a second, the A decreases by 1. And then over here, we have essentially we have A to the 0. A to the 0 is 1. right? So you go A, a squared, A to the first, A to the 0. And likewise, here you have, let's get rid of this, you have b to the 0. You start with no b's, and then you have 1b, and here you have 2b's. The same thing happens here. You start with a to the maximum value, 3. How many b's you got over there? None. b to the 0. And then, forget about this for a second. Put my back for a second. And then a decreases, a goes a cubed, a squared, a to the first, a to the zero, right? And b starts at zero, conversely, it works backwards. b starts at zero, goes b to the first, b squared, b cubed, right? Try the fourth one and, and maybe pause me and work through and make sure the fourth one makes sense to you like that. Go. Okay, so with the a, a plus b to the fourth, we could expand it fairly easily and say, oh, a is going to start with this maximum value of 4 and go a to the 4, a to the 3, a to the 2, a to the 1, a to the none. And b is going to start with b to the none and then work its way up. b to the first, b to the second, b to the third, b to the fourth. Right? Same. So if there's four things here, you start with b to the 0 and you have b to the 1, 2, 3, 4. So if this is 4, there's five terms here. Just like if you have a plus b squared, or let's call it x plus 2 squared, you know this is going to turn into a trinomial, x squared plus 4x plus 4. All right? So if there's two things, if this is squared and you get a binomial, when you expand it, you'll get three things. right? Um, so here, a plus b to the fifth will give you six uh, terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And they all play the same game. A starts out to the maximum exponent, and then A decreases, 3, 2, 1, 0, A to the 0, and B starts out at 0, and goes B to the 1st, B to the 2nd, B to the 3rd, B to the 4th, B to the 5th. That's all great. I understand that. What up with the other weird little numbers in there? Take a look-see. This one, this one is 1. Here we have 1a one and 1b. One Here you have 1a, two of these, and one of those. Here you have 1, 3, a 3, a 1. 1, 3, a 3, a 1. 
Here you have a one, a four, a six, a four, a one. I feel like I'm Italian. A one, a four. Here you get a one, a five, a, a ten, a ten, a five, a one. Is that, a, is that insulting? I don't care. Um, what is this pattern? <laughs> it's Pascal's triangle. Neat. Right? That's pretty cool. So we can, uh, these modifiers that just sort of show up. Where are they? Where are they? These modifiers that show, just sort of show up, they're coefficients. These coefficients that just show, sort of show up can be found through Pascal's triangle. And you can either remember how to find them. We probably won't ask you to do more than this, right, to the fifth or something like that. But you can also find them with your calculator, which I'll check out in a second. So let's try it. These are the, uh, the fine points, but mostly um, just keeping track of all the little brackets, uh, all the little pieces, all the terms is essential. So brackets are essential as is, where is it, where is it? Being a huge nerd, being a huge nerd is essential too. Um, okay, so let's try one. So here's the standard way of x plus two cubed. You expand it to x squared, x plus two times itself three times. You expand this and then drop this in and 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 simplify, right? And that is horrible, right? Oh, don't look at that. One. Um, here's the sneaky way: is use Pascal's triangle. And think about what's happening in all this. I know that this is the third row. I'm going to use, like, this is to the three. I'm going to use the third row of, of this. Because I know there's going to be three things in here. Right? This is a, to the third power. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four terms, which leads me to this third row. Walk with me on the first one. And then you'll be, you'll be fine on the fourth one by the time we see this four times. So I know that this thing, I don't even know what this is. I know that this is going to look like... I'm going to ignore this, pretend I don't see it. I know that in my expansion, x is going to start at the maximum value, x cubed, and then x is going to decrease to 0. Right? My brain hurts. Ralphie, uh, you give yourself a lot of space while you're writing these down because you have to put a lot of things in. 2 is going to start at 0. Maybe you don't want to write it in, but I'm going to write it in just so we see it happening. And 2 is going to increase up to the maximum exponent of 3. There's going to be plus signs in between all these. And also we're going to have a modifier in front of these. And that modifier is going to be the numbers from Pascal's triangle with the same row as our exponent. Pretty neat, huh? I love how math works. So there's going to be a 1, a 3, another three, and a one, right? So this gets kind of convoluted, but if you try to keep it like spread, spread out a little bit like this, as you're writing, it makes it a lot easier, right? Put big spaces between the plus signs so you can see everything kind of spread out nicely. All right, so now clean it up, right? So this will turn into one times x cubed times another one. That's just x cubed. Kaching. Here's 3 times x squared times 2, so 3 times uh, 1 set of 2, so that's 6, and an x squared. Kaching. Here's 3 times 2 squared is 4, so that's 12, and a single x. Kaching. And 1 times 1 times 2 to the third is just 8. You want to say it? Uh, all right, there it is. Bam. And probably for an x cubed, this is too much, like this using the binomial expansion theorem, the binomial expansion theorem, is too much work, right? You probably just do it this way, it's shorter. But let's try it when it gets less nice, to the fifth. I don't want to multiply x minus 4 times itself five times, do a ton of distribution. We got better things to do with life. So let's try to uh, simplify this. Are these in colors? Nah, I want to do it myself, sorry. Sorry, sorry. You guys are gonna have to suffer through it. So uh, I want to start with x. Let's do let's do x in blue. I know x is going to we're gonna expand this. X is gonna start at a max of five and then decrease four, three, two, one. Ah. And also go to zero. My brain hurts. Monty Python. You should try Monty Python. Uh, go x to the zero. Like that. Cool. Uh, 
negative 4, negative, negative, negative 4, neg neg negative, the negative is important, uh, negative 4 is going to start at 0 and work its way up. Negative 4 to the 1, negative 4 to the 2, right? Even right there. Oh, two, one, two. This is three. Negative four to the four. And as the powers go even and odd, the sign on each term is going to oscillate. It's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. And then in between, and, and then there's this modifying um, a coefficient in all of them. This is the fifth exponent. So I'm going to use the fifth row. Note, sticky wicket is the the first thing you see is the zeroth row. Um, but I ge generally don't memorize that. I think about this, that I'm looking, this is a five, so there should be six things in here. There should, and so I'm looking for the one with six things in it. The most we're going to ask you to remember is like, I don't know, row five, like, uh, so I know like in my brain, I kind of carry around like this one, two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one. I, 14641 has five pieces in it, so it's probably the next one down. So you can like quickly sketch this out. I'll also show you how to do this with your calculator. With this, you get 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. You get plus signs in front of all that. Breaking them up. Break it up. And then we do a little cleanup. So this is, oh, nothing there, nothing there. This is S, x to the fifth. This is negative 4. Ooh, that's going to be a minus then. So hold off on the pluses. So this is going to be negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. X to the fourth. This is, ugh, right. Okay, let's just, <laughs> now let's skip. That, right? So there's, there's the negative 20. This is 16, positive 16 times 10. And then the coefficients get big and ugly. Um, I'll show you how to yeah, use your calculator for that, obviously. Nobody wants you to watch you multiply to 1280, right? Um, great, okay? So, you try it, yeah? Pause me, try it on your own. It's not just x to the fourth, it's 3x to the fourth. Try that out. My brain hurts. <laughs> the zombie's got his brain all eaten out. Um, great, so... We're going to do this same thing, x cubed. I won't write it out just for time's sake, but here's the x cubed, or sorry, 3x, starting with 4, then 3, then 2, then 1, then none. And the 1 is going from 0 up to 3, to 4. And then this is to the fourth power, so it should come from the fourth row, 0, 1, 2, 3, fourth row, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Um, you could also kind of guess because it has 1, 2, three, four, five terms. So you pick which row has five numbers in it. And when you simplify, 81x squared, blah, 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 blah. Usually, if there's a, if this isn't just a pure x, if it's like 3x or something weird, that'll be a one. They'll just kind of like give you, make it easier that way because you're not multiplying by big, big, ugly numbers. Neat. That's binomial expansion. Um, so what I'd like you to do is in your packet, you have some problems and yeah, I'm sure you have other problems as well. Uh, try those expansions using the expansion theorem. I know you can do it other ways, but try it with that. Be careful with this sort of thing. Um, these will turn into like x plus x to the negative one to the fourth. This is when you flex your exponential muscles. Cool. Good to not see you. Uh, not good to not see you. Got, wish I could see you. I don't know. Bye. We'll see you.